Before continuing in this terrific journey in their configurable computing area, it can be useful to set a common language that will be used from now on. Obviously, we had already encountered several new terms. Field programmable getArray was one of them, bstream was a second one. But we do need something more. First of all, I'm going to introduce you the term object code. With object code, I'm going to refer to the executable active physical implementation, either hardware or software, of a given functionality. Think of an executable file in the software context. This file it is nothing more than a sequence of zeros and ones, as it is a bstream file used to configure a certain system, or just a functionality, on an FPGA. The object code is something more. It can be seen as a bstream under execution. To have an object code, we need to design or implement, if you prefer, a core. A core is a specific representation of a functionality. It is possible, as an example, to have a core described in VHDL, in C, or in an intermediate representation, as an example, via data flow graph. Once that the core has been defined, we need to integrate it into a system. This means that the pure functionality is not sufficient. We need something more. We need to bind it with the proper communication infrastructure because we need to send it data in order to have it properly working. And at the same time, we need to collect back the produced data. A core capable of computing great functionalities is completely useless if we cannot provide it data and read back its results. From now on, a core described using an hardware description language combined with its communication infrastructure, a bus, a point-to-point -point connection, a network on chip, just to provide some example, will be called IP Core, Intellectual Property Core. As we know, we are working with FPGAs, and one of the unique characteristics of these devices is their ability of being reconfigured. Within this context, an IP core that can be plugged and or unplugged at runtime in an already working architecture is going to be called reconfigurable functional unit. Now, we need one more definition which is obviously related to the one that we have just seen. We know that we can work with IP core that can be swapped in and out a running system. We know that these elements are called reconfigurable functional unit. But one thing which is missing is the definition of where these units will be placed. And that is exactly what a reconfigurable region is. A reconfigurable region is a portion of the device area used to implement a reconfigurable functional unit. Finally, we can define the configuration bstream as the sequence of bits that is where the name belongs to, used to configure a reconfigurable region by being properly stored into the configuration memory. With this set of definitions in mind, we can now go back to the configuration process. Image and see how these definitions are going to clarify and extend this scenario. We are going to see what the new challenges we are going to face from now on. In the figure, we have an FPGA which is configured by storing the desired configuration bstream into the configuration memory via a configuration interface. But now we know that a reconfiguration bstream is the sequence of bits to configure a reconfigurable region, which means that the FPGA cannot be seen any longer as a monolithic component. Furthermore, we know that these reconfigurable regions are used to host a certain reconfigurable functional unit. What is now missing is exactly this. How can we identify these reconfigurable functional units? What does it imply to have several reconfigurable regions defined on an FPGA? Are we going always to work with several reconfigurable regions or not? Those answers, those challenges, are the ones that we are willing to explore, to find an answer to.